I stumbled upon this infographic on LinkedIn, which now is seemingly the home of infographics of this type of content, and it's the Kafka top five use cases. All right, interesting. Data streaming, sure. Log analysis, makes sense. But hang on, message queuing, change data capture, and event sourcing. I'm Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com, and somebody's gotta do it because parts of this infographic, specifically those last three, make no sense. Just so we're clear, what is Kafka? Well, Kafka is an event streaming platform, but the way I would describe it is a distributed log with publish subscribe capabilities built on top of it. So back to this shiny infographic, Kafka is event streaming, so data streaming, that kind of makes sense, right? They're both streaming. Log analysis aggregates and analyzes logs from multiple sources. These do actually are valid use cases. What are not are these three on the right. Message queuing, date, change data capture, and event sourcing. If I explain what it's not, you will really get a better understanding of what it is. Before I start debunking some of these, I'd like to thank my sponsor, Event Store. And I'm gonna be illustrating coming up how you can be using EventStoreDB and Kafka together. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, Check out the link in the description. First, Kafka is not a queue, and I mentioned that it's a distributed log, but if we think about it just as a log, when we're actually appending events, we're appending new events with our producer, we're publishing new events to our topics, we're appending new events to those topics. And this matters because with the publish subscribe capabilities, we're publishing messages to topics, we have two different consumers here, they can be uh, subscribing to these topics, say the first one, the first consumer gets the first message, the, another consumer at the exact same time in parallel, after the fact, doesn't matter, they're decoupled, it can consume that very first message. Then it could say, okay, I've processed that message, give me the second message in that index. However, because those messages are always there, we can have the first consumer say, no, I wanna reprocess that first message. I wanna start at index zero again, rather than from where I already process. And you can do this with brand new consumers that you start up. You can start reading right from the beginning of the log. Now you might be saying, if you're familiar with Kafka, but I can kind of get it to behave and act like a queue. And I'm about to get into the weeds here, so bear with me, with consumer groups and partitions. And the answer to that is, sure, you can kind of get close, but you're gonna lose the ability to have competing consumers. I'll have a video, a link to a video at the very end of this video, but there's another distinction that needs to be made. There needs to be a distinction between commands and events. Kafka, we already mentioned, an event streaming platform, a publish subscribe of events, not commands. So the thing here is that you need to make this distinction of what are you trying to do? Generally with the queue, you're interacting often with commands. And the purpose of command is that you're trying to invoke behavior. You're saying that, okay, the ownership, is how I like to make a distinction, is it's owned by the consumer. And there's only ever one single consumer, there's one boundary, one service, that is gonna process that command. There can many, be many different senders, and generally, they're named kind of in a verb or some type of action that you want to invoke. You're trying to tell some part of your system, do this. One specific part of your system, do something. Events are very different. You're trying to tell other parts of your system, many different parts of your system, something happened. Those events are owned, that event is owned, kind of its definition is owned by the publisher of who's publishing the event. You want to tell other parts of your system, hey, this happened. There could be zero consumers. There could be many different consumers, but you're still only going to have one publisher publishing that event that's distinct to what happened with it. And generally they'll be named in the past tense. To illustrate that distinction, I can have multiple different producers generating that command and publishing that and sending that to our queue. We're gonna have a single consumer process that message, that command from that queue. Not zero consumers, not two consumers, one consumer. With events, we're gonna have a producer that's gonna publish our event to our topic, and we could have zero consumers or many different consumers subscribe to that topic, to that event, and process it. My example here, I have two consumers that are subscribing and gonna be processing that event from that topic. So can you use Kafka as a queue? Sure, I guess if you wanna force the issue with topics and publish subscribe, and it not really being a queue, you can kind of force the issue, but that makes no sense to me. Just like it makes no sense to try to use a hammer to pound in a screw. So number two is change data capture. What's the issue there? Capture and replicate all the changes made to a database. Kafka doesn't actually do CDC or change data capture. That's why I'm including it in this list of that it doesn't make sense. But tools like DBZM, for example, do 
and then they leverage Kafka as a means to distribute that data via publish, subscribe, and topics. So an example with Debezium is it interacts with MySQL's bin log, it captures all those changes with the database, and then it can publish those to topics in Kafka, which then you could have many different consumers like my data warehouse or some type of cache invalidation or other other consumers that you would have that would be subscribing to those topics from that change feed from something like Debezium as a CDC tool. Debezium is the CDC tool. Kafka is just the means to actually distribute that data. Now, change data capture has its use cases. However, it states here, capture and replicate all changes made to a database. And this can leave you shooting yourself in the foot and causing a whole lot of issues coupling without realizing it. If you're trying to replicate changes and you need database replication, then use database replication built into the database that you're using. But to better illustrate why this is a problem or why CDC can be a problem, I'm gonna move on to the third point, which is event sourcing. What does event sourcing have to do with Kafka? The answer is nothing. That infographic was correct in saying that event sourcing is a way of persisting state with a series of events. That's correct. The key uh, word there is state. And what we've been talking about with Kafka, it's an event streaming platform with PubSub about communication. There's a difference about what we're storing internally as state and how we're communicating that with other services or other boundaries. So the thing here to understand about event sourcing is it's internal to whatever service and how you're determining that that's how you want to store state. Maybe in one service, you're event sourcing. Maybe in some other boundary at some other service that you have a relational database. Maybe you have a document store. That's what you're focusing on is the internal details of that service of how you're recording state. That's what event sourcing is about. Kafka is about communication. So that means if I'm event sourcing, I have a service B interacting with event store as our database for event sourcing. That's our event store, our database. We may have some consumer because it has consumer capabilities of subscriptions to do some type of translation. We have some event that we've stored in our series of events in some event stream, but we don't want to necessarily leak that out to all these external services. We don't want to kind of leak those internal implementation details about the events we're persisting. Rather, we may do some translation to some external event, and that's what we're publishing to Kafka. That's what we're using, publish, subscribe, so that another service can subscribe to that topic, to that event that we want to expose, so that it can consume that however it needs to. But there's a very big difference here between what we're using events to persist state and how we're using events to communicate. There's a difference in utility. If you're using something like Kafka and you wanna use it as an event store and as a way to communicate with other services and you're using those exact same events, that would be no different than having a service have a database and letting any other service just openly connect to it and query that database. You wouldn't do that because it'd be uh, coupling directly to the internal structures of that data source of that service. Well, that's what you'd be doing if you're using Kafka as a means to record state and distribute and communicate with those events. They have totally two different utilities. Looking back at this infographic in the use cases of Kafka as an event streaming platform, data streaming, we have some IoT devices like a watch or a phone constantly publishing various events to Kafka. What it's not illustrating is there actually should be some consumers that are doing something with those events that are being published. Same thing with the log analysis. Maybe you have logs of just different information being published by various sources that you still need a consumer to combine those and aggregate those to provide some meaningful output. You're gonna have some type of consumers for that. But at the end of the day, you're publishing events and you're consuming them, subscribing to them. That's really what the fact of the matter is. Change data capture looks like it's kind of doing it, but Kafka is just the means to distribute that data. Hopefully you found this video helpful, kind of getting some insights about this infographic and what I thought made sense didn't make sense. If you ever stumble upon some, <laughs> most likely on LinkedIn, make sure to send me a message on LinkedIn, leave a comment here on YouTube, or send me on something on Twitter on X, and I'd love to take a look. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna chat with other software developers, you have kind of questions about these types of things or different tooling, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.